one of the things I think we want to realize is that uh, this is a, uh, these are amazing, remarkable times, and they really do call for, though, maybe a, a, an idea of creating a vision of where we really want to go. And uh, I think you've all heard that expression that uh, if you don't know where you want to go, any map helps you get there. We recognize that I think that in our state that uh, we've been moving forward, but maybe not with, as collectively and, and as, uh, as uh, in partnership with each other as we would want to. And that's partly why I, I would guess that we've gone from being the fifth largest economy uh, as a state down to the eighth, and who knows what we are today. Interestingly, during the same time, uh, California's ag economy has continued to actually do well and improve and actually increase. And that has a lot to do with the ag community in our, in our state uh, understanding that we, we have to change and with the changing scenery is something that we're very used to. When you look at uh, any farmer, all of you who are growers out there, when you make an investment, whether it's in a new tractor, whether it's in a new irrigation system, whether it's in a new seed, whether it's uh, in a new uh, carousel for your milking, all of these investments you make, when you choose to do that, you're trying to enhance your predictability your predictability that there is going to be a better result in a very unpredictable kind of uh, endeavor, which is agriculture to begin with. We know that the weather will give us all kinds of different things that we can't expect. The marketplace is unpredictable many times. But you have to recognize that when we do invest in things, all of us that are in the ag sector, that's done because we're trying to increase our predictability. And I think part of our challenge then is how are we going to message, how are we going to talk about the reality and future potential, if you will, of an agriculture that's geared up for a 21st century. So using that as a background, um, you know, I had a chance a, a month ago, about a month ago this time I was in India at a sustainable development uh, uh, summit uh, based in uh, Del New Delhi, uh, and the title of that summit was The Road to Copenhagen. And the reason I was there was because earlier, uh, a couple months earlier, many of those folks had been in our state. The governor had invited them for a climate change conference down in Los Angeles. And I was one of two people uh, in that whole climate talking about the impact to agriculture and forestry. Everybody else was talking about everything else to deal with climate change. And I complained to some of the organizers of this conference in New Delhi, who I happened to meet, uh, about that lack of a voice of what agriculture is going to have to do in terms of adaptation or the mitigation, all those kinds of things, what's going to have to, ha have to happen uh, in this foreseeable future. Because ultimately, the simplest thing I could say to them and the simplest thing I can say when I'm out talking is that unpredictable weather means unpredictable harvest. It doesn't matter if you're a big grower, it doesn't matter if you're a small grower, it doesn't matter what your boundary line is, whether it's a county, city, uh, state, national lines, unpredictable weather uh, as, a, as, as something that we're not used to is going to cause tremendous trouble because it'll give us absolute uh, challenges with unpredictable harvests. When I look at sustainability, and I think the, this is what we're talking about with 25 by 25, we're talking about all the things that go into st sustainability. Uh, you hear about the three E's all the time, right? You hear about the economics, we need to be profitable. You hear about the environmental um, uh, partnering that has to go on. You hear about the equity with, the so with society and social justice, uh, environmental justice, and all those things. The fourth E that I think is as important as anything was mentioned in one of the earlier discussions is education. Uh, education and whether it's uh, ex agricultural extension outreach, whether it's the research to do the pilot projects that give then a grower a chance to look at something, say that looks good to me, and then he takes on the next step of being an early adopter. Uh, education is critical, and if we don't invest in the research and the component of training and teaching folks about what's possible of what it actually is, not that it's not the 19th, 19th, 18th, 20th century that we're in a 21st century, that's as important as anything in sustainability that I would say to, that we can see today. Uh, and I'll tell you one of the challenges, infrastructure, the things that allow agriculture to take place in the first place, a dependable water supply, a pest exclusion system that keeps out uh, damaging pests or diseases that would knock you out of, out of competition, whether in a quarantine or just an absolute uh, destruction of your crop. These are the kinds of things that I think give me nightmares because we just see that we're, 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 we're going to be challenged tremendously, whether it's these droughts that you see. And all of you, I've mentioned this to several, uh, I'm, we're all watching Australia. What a, what a, what a collapsing uh, nightmare watching their system. 50% of their ag system is collapsed at this point because of drought, because of a lack of infrastructure that was in place for a very predictable problem that they were going to have over time. Looking at two countries, a tale of two countries, look at Australia, and I just mentioned it. They have an enormous challenge right now, and now they're 
they're, they're struggling because they're in crisis. They're trying to make uh, uh, repairs to their system. They're trying to ramp up desal their desalination. They're trying to ramp up uh, uh, water, uh, water reuse reuse systems and they're really trying to make things happen but they're operating out of crisis. The, the other country, the tail two countries, is look at the Netherlands. The Netherlands, uh, most of us in the room are, are old enough to remember you'd see these little Dutch kids on the cartoons with their fingers uh, in the levees and trying to hold back floods. In the 1950s, the, the, ne the, the Netherlands suffered some pretty catastrophic uh, north, north uh, North Sea uh, storm surges and it flooded their whole country. Their country is 60 percent below sea level. And in the 1950s after those floods they basically said never again. And so we had some interesting guys over in our office the other day talking to us about the work they had been doing helping out with down in the Katrina areas about rebuilding the levees and the systems down there. And I was asking one of the guys, you know, God, how's that work that you guys uh, have decided as a nation not to go through another one of those storms? And he said, well, it's pretty simple. We're not going to survive the next storm. We're going to thrive through the next storm. In fact, what we've done is we've built levees that can withstand a one in 10,000 seawalls, seawalls that can withstand a one in 10,000 year storm. And I, I said, one in 10,000 year storm, you've got to be kidding. You, I, we've got one in 100 year levees out in California. Um, you mean one in 1,000? And he said, no, we've got one in 1,000. We've got a couple one in 100, one in 500 year seawalls and levees in the areas that we don't want to flood. But in the main areas that we're going to protect and we're going to invest in an infrastructure that gets us way down the road, we've got one in 10,000 year storm protection. And I just, we were just, those of us in the room were just silent, we just said, wow, that's a good example of a people in a nation deciding that their future, that they're going to survive, not survive, they're going to thrive through their predictable fate their predictable future when they're given these kind of odds. We have to take a look at that in a hard way globally, nationally, as a state and start to recognize that we can choose to survive and put them, you know, uh, barely deal with these uh, deferred maintenance issues or we can step on it and actually put ourselves into a much better spot in a strategic sense to pre event, pre uh, prevent the crisis. When agriculture is thriving, the whole world has a chance to do better, uh, whether it's environmentally, whether it's economically, whether it's nutritionally, whether it's food security. Uh, these are the kinds of things that I think pull us together. Maybe this is the synergy, if you will, because of our energy opportunities here in a, in a time when we didn't have these 30, 40, 50 years ago. This is a time where we get to just have a new vision, step off, and let's get into our 21st century and do it together.